With the release of version 13.29, a new component library for framing is available in the File Preferences dialog of PLS Pole. The framing library will allow you to define the framing on a pole and reuse it on other poles without having to build it from its individual parts. This would include any components in the model besides the pole, including any wood pole defects or bolt holes related to the frame set. The insulator links for set and phases are also included in the framing. The framing manager is accessed in the components framing menu. It allows you a graphical preview of the frame set that shows all the framing attached to a pole. The pole is translucent in color so you can see what is considered the framing. This example model has several framing elements that were imported from our RUS example structure library. As I click through this, you can see that the framing manager supports single pole and multi pole framings as well as guide structures. The framing manager is searchable at the top of the dialog by using one of the keywords related to the frame set, which is listed in the drop down menu, such as a voltage or it is freeform so you can type in your search term. You can search multiple terms and keywords by selecting them individually. For example, let's say you're looking for the 69KV frame sets that also have the designation TP in their name. You can first type TP which will list the term to the right of the search dialog and then you can select 69KV from the list of keywords which will leave you with the list of frame sets that have TP in their name and 69KV as a keyword. If you want to reset the search dialog, you can quickly do so by hitting the reset search button which will return the full framing list and clear the search terms. You can quickly add any of these frame sets to a pole model by clicking in the graphical preview window and dragging the framing element onto the pole. For this example, I will drag a typical distribution framing to a bare pole. As you drag the frame set to the pole, you will see a stick rendering preview of the framing element on the pole as you move it. To place the framing on the pole, you can just release the mouse. To know the height above ground the frame set is being inserted at, you will see this value in the status bar at the bottom of the screen. If you want to snap to a certain distance along the pole, or from the top, you can hit the S key, which will bring up the snap settings from the graphical ad. You will need to continually hold the left mouse button while making these snap settings, and then after making the setting to your desired value, you can hold down the control key to have the framing element snap to this integral and report the distance from the top of the pole to the framing element in the status bar. You cannot edit any of the individual parts on a frame set through the PLS pole interface for the members. The frame set is considered one element and moves together or can be deleted together in the model. For example, if I was to select the cross arm of the framing element that was just added, you would be brought to the framing connectivity table where you could change some of the placement information for the frame set such as the azimuth if you wanted to rotate the entire frame set. And if you clicked on the Edit Properties button at the bottom of the dialog, it would only take you to the table view of the framing library where you can change some of the names, keywords, or default insertion distance, but no way to change the cross arm properties. There are two ways to edit the items in the framing element. The first is to go to the Geometry, Framing, Explode command, which will break all the framing elements used in the model into its individual parts so you can edit them. This command breaks all links to the framing element. It does allow for the movement and change of the individual elements after exploding in the traditional method. If you are wanting to change the actual framing element, you can edit these by going to the Framing Manager of PLS Pole and highlighting the frame set from the list and then clicking the Edit button. This will launch a special instance of PLS Pole where the pole will appear as translucent and you will be able to make changes to the framing element's individual components and then save the model. It will also lock the original instance of PLS Pole and give the notification that the program is waiting for the framing edit to complete before being able to launch the pole. Once the new instance is saved in the framing edit, it will automatically update the framing element in the library in any instance where this occurs on the pole model. 
To populate the framing element library, you can do so by importing PLS pole models. For example, let's say we have a two-phase structure with a neutral and we wish to add this to our existing framing library. To do so, you need to open an existing model or create a new model with this configuration. Then you can go to the General, General Data dialog and input the project notes that will go with the framing element as well as the voltage which is included as a keyword for the framing. For this example, I will include the tag two phase and the tag distribution in the project notes and we will place a voltage of 12 kV. After saving the model, I can go to components, framing, add current model and you will see the framing name, stock number, notes and keywords that will be used for the framing. After hitting OK, you can then go to the components framing table edit and you will see that the framing has been added to the library with the notes and voltage that were used in the model. Now you can use this framing element on any other models you would like. You can also use the components framing import other models command to import many PLS pole models into the framing library at once. So if you already have a PLS pole library of your typical framing, you can quickly and easily create a framing library based on these models. Another way to use the framing library is to create a new PLS pole model directly from this component library. As long as you have a framing library in your file preferences and the default for new projects, you can go to the File New Framing Wizard, which launches a dialog similar to the Framing Manager asking you to select a framing element to use for the new structure. Once you select the framing element you want, you can hit OK and the program will prompt you for the type of pole you would like for the new model. You can choose the standard wood pole or a field measured wood pole where you have collected field measurements of the pole you are wishing to check. There are also options to select a steel, concrete, laminated wood, or FRP pole for the model. After selecting the pole size and class you would want, you can hit OK and your model is ready to be saved and analyzed in PLS Pole or used in PLS CAD. If you have selected a multi-pole framing element, then the pole type and size selected will be used for all pole locations in the model. You can always change this after the model has been created or use the batch save command to create multiple pole heights and classes for the model. With the new framing library, you will be able to quickly and easily create new structure models and modify existing models to meet site-specific needs such as this example, where we can create a 69 kV H-frame structure and then add a distribution arm and neutral below on one pole for an underbuild. This is quickly accomplished using the new framing manager and can be saved in the other classes and heights. For more information on Powerline System software, please see our website at www.powline.com. For any questions, please send an email to info at powline.com. Or if you would like to receive a quotation for new software or to renew your existing software, please send an email to sales at powline.com.